Hi and welcome to our channel. Today we are starting off a new manhwa called Hidden Love. Sit back and enjoy the video and please don't forget to subscribe. In the beginning of the story, a young girl is sitting in her class. And as the scene depicts, the current time is of mathematics class. But somehow this girl seems tired. In the meantime, the teacher who notices the young girl losing her focus from the board shouts out her name loud, Sang Ji! And as she stands in response to her teacher and is asked from the teacher about what he has been teaching while she was not paying attention, she tells him he was telling the class about angle 4's equivalency to 72 degree. This makes the teacher get surprised of her, that this is strange that she said it correctly. However, he still walks up on her and tells her that even if she know what he is teaching, her focus should be maintained in order to maintain the class's decorum and threatens her to not to be in such a lucky favor where she can think of achieving a perfect test score as usual. She also tells him that it may not be her luck every time since she gets perfect scoring in almost every test. The teacher bangs the scale on his desk and becomes angry, complaining to the daring mouth of Sang Zhi to be such a talkative student who talks back to her teacher, and commands her that if she thinks about herself to be this capable, why don't she come up and teach the class? Sang Zi, with zero hesitation, tells her teacher that if she would ever come and teach the class, then there will be no point of having a teacher like him anyway. The ever satisfaction she would have received gets unbanned because now she wonders that she might have made a mistake, and the teacher furiously commands Sang Zi to bring her parents along with her by tomorrow. Later, as it seems that school is over, Sang Zi walks out where Zhen Ru Yu, who is Sang Zi's friend, comes up on her and tells complaints about her big mouth, due to which Sang Zi's mother had been visiting the school almost twice this particular month only. Sang Zi there tells her that she don't even know how she provoked the teacher, and as so, she complains that the teacher is somehow enjoying to bring her parents to school, even if there is no problem at all. Zhen Ru Yi wonders that Sang Zi is clueless about her actions other than the academics, where no doubt she has been getting perfect scores all over up until this time. So she playfully asks her if she is going to the bookstore where at first Sang Zi questionably notices and asks what her reason to go to the bookstore be in the first place. Zhen Ru Yi notifies her in response that she don't want to meet Fu Zheng Chu, don't she? And what it could be, she denies and says that she don't want to go. And while she takes out her phone and sends a message to someone known as Sang Yan, she responds to Zhen Ru Yi that for the moment she want to take precautionary measures along with her plan and figure out how to deal with teacher Chan, and on her phone she sends messages to Sang Yan, which quotes, Brother, your college is giving you a short break soon, and can you come home for a bit tomorrow? Zheng Ru. Yi then tells her that there are a lot of people who think that Fu Zheng Chu is a cute guy, and that way she is not the only one to think like that. In response to that, Sang Ji says that perhaps everyone should go and have a checkup for their eyes. As Sang Ji walks front to Zheng Ru Yi, Zheng Ru Yi asks, why is Sang Ji not going to the bookstore to meet with Fu Zhen Chu? But she asks her if Sang Ji is required to bring her parents in the next morning, and that is why she is scared that she will be scolded by her mother. And how about if she bring her father? Sang Ji says that she is not going to bring anyone. This way, Zheng Ru Yi becomes surprised and asks what will happen then when their bald teacher Chen will either call her parents. Sang Zi turns to her, showing her cell phone, and tells her in response that that will be the time when her brother will come use for. As for the text messages she had just sent, her brother Sang Yan has texted her. She opens it up and becomes crackled, since her brother tells her that he won't come back home for now. Specially, he says that he won't come home if Sang Zi is there. Later, when she walks past the main market, she wonders that she should have been nicer to her brother back at some time, but she didn't know he would react like that. However, some time later when she finally gets home, she opens the main door and her mother greets her by calling her Zhi Ji, which is her nickname in short. 
Her mood doesn't seem to be well, as she wonders that this is so troublesome, and she cannot bring her parents to the school tomorrow. So right now, she is in thought what she should do, whereas as for her mother, who tells Zizi to take something from her and take it to her brother's room. She was about to say more, but Zizi quickly interrupts her as she got excited to hear that big brother is back. She deeply wonders that she is finally saved as Sang Yan has arrived. Zizi quickly grabs the plate as it seems to be one and joyfully takes it to serve it to her brother. Her mother there tells her that Sang Yan was playing basketball and he came back to take a shower. The plate contains cutted fruit, including watermelon and orange. And behind Ziju stands her mother, who is wondering the strange moment about when did Ziju became this happy on hearing about her brother's arrival. As of that, Ziju then brings the plate to her brother's room, and as she opens the door, her brother sits on the couch using his phone. At first he had his face lowered down, but it was not just that. Ziju became much more on suus and surprised both at the same time, as then he lifts his head which makes Ziji to step back. She wonders what it is, either that her brother was smoking and the smoke made her confused. She hesitatingly asks her big brother if he has applied plastic surgery on him, that how come he has changed so much after coming home a few months? There, she mentions about that day, which made her to suddenly believe in God and also the beginning of a huge misunderstanding that led to a new story. But, as she mentioned the plastic surgery, her brother looks up strangely and, as of his little devil gives him the idea to play the trick, he accompanies with him and tells Sang Zi that, yes, he did plastic surgery. This way, Sang Zi becomes extremely surprised that how come her mom and dad didn't see this as they seem okay with it. There, he stands up and tells her to come to him and see how his plastic surgery went. Surprisingly, someone walks up from her behind and refers to her as a brat and tells her to move aside. Sang Zai kind of looks dead. Sang Yan asks her if she has shocked to see his handsome looks. Yeah, bro. You are never mind. Now this is the story turning point. Who the hell is this guy then? Yeah, even she asks the same, well, as Sang Ji asks her actual brother Sang Yan about the other guy sitting on the couch, the other one asks Sang Ji if she doesn't recognize him as she just called him brother. And Sang Yan playfully responds while he looks at Sang Ji that how affectionate that seems. She stands while she regrets herself to call the other dude as brother, and now as she wonders that they are definitely thinking that Sang Ji is an idiot, this dude stands up and tries to come near her. He then introduces himself to Sang Ji as he is Duan Jia Shu and that he is Sang Yan's friend plus his roommate. He tells to Sang Yan that he might conclude their looks are similar. And Sang Yan, while he looks up on his smartphone, he tells him to go and look himself in the mirror. Duan Jia Shu, who then wonders that what would be the reason by which Sang Ji thought of him as her brother, she throws the plate and proceed to make him shut and not to complete his sentence, but little do you guys know, as of course, Sang Yan is her brother and she knows him well. Basically, Duan Jia Shu was about to say that if he has applied plastic surgery as if he is her brother, Sang Yan says, brat and start yelling at her. He asks her if she really think he needs plastic surgery to look good and how come is it necessary? In response, frustrated Sang Zi says, that why not? It's normal for you to want plastic surgery. She says that mom didn't tell about Sang Yan bringing his friends over with him. And so that is why she only thought there would only be one person in his room and that would be himself. And by that, it is normal for her to misunderstand. Sang Yan rolls his finger to depict Sang Ji as mental and says if it is normal, she should figure out if her brain is working properly, since she is obviously stupid. That's not me, it's him saying that. It was just this moment where Sang Zi starts to cry out loud like a baby. There her mother comes rushing in to see what either could have happened, and just as she enters the room, Sang Yan turns to Duan Jia Shu and points finger to him, while he mentions how come he can bully his little sister. 
but Sang Ji herself turns behind Duan Jia Xu and says to her mother that her brother hit her. Her furious but devilish mother looks shows it all while she puts her hand on Sang Yan's shoulder and asks, how come he bully his sister again, and that now he is blaming it on his friend? His mother drags him out where he tries to make her hear him, but that's of no use. Brother live with it, I guess. As he leaves, Sang Zi, who was crying, does her evil laugh, and Duan Jiashu comforts her. But as he sees this, he asks her that she stopped crying so quick, and then he takes out a tissue paper to wipe her tears off. Sang Zhi wonders that she wanted to take her brother to the school in the next morning, but now, as it seems, she is clueless. Just then, she looks at Duan Jiashu and thinks of him to be taken for the purpose. So she asks him a favor. First, she asks him if he will be free tomorrow, to which he tells her that he will have a busy routine. She questionably becomes envious to hear this and start threatening him that he definitely need to be free by tomorrow, and if he is busy, she will tell mom that he and Sang Yan teamed up in hitting her. Well, he asks, why is she being this unreasonable where she says that she is still young and she don't understand what reasonable is? This marks her to be unreasonable and shameless, woohoo. Sorry, so in response to that, Duan Jia Xu asks, why is she asking him about this in the first place? And she tells him that if he can pretend to be her real brother and go see her teacher in the morning. He concludes that her teacher is wanting to meet her parents, and that is why she is requesting him to which she doesn't reply, but her facial expressions are enough to be an answer itself. Then he asks, why is she asking him to be her real brother instead of Sang Yan? And she asks him after what she has done to him just now, and if she will ask him to go with her to see the teacher, A would tell mom straight ahead. However, Duan Jia Xu says to her that her brother isn't that kind of a person. And just in the meantime, the door to the room is bashed open and Sang Yan walks in. He goes to pick up his dress and asks Duan Jia Xu to leave with him. He greets Sang Ji and say to her that they will meet next time. She becomes startled and wonders what next time does he mean. She holds him and gently asks him that they should wait until dinner and this is already his first time to the house. He tells her that maybe he will wait for dinner the next time he will come, and thus she starts begging him over. She makes him realize that if he has already forgotten what they were talking about just now, and how old is he that he can forget this early, as if he is having short-term memory loss. Sang Yan looks at her and asks, What even is she doing? as today is the first time, and they too are acting like they will be apart forever. And to Sang Zi, he asks her if she wants to, the Princess Pearl. Yeah, just like one. Sang Yan tells Duan Jia Xu that his sister is only 12 years old, and noticing this, Sang Zi corrects him right after that she is already 13. However, Duan Jia Xu becomes surprised to hear that she is only 13, and she is in a high school. So he asks her about her school, to which she was first asked about her grade, and she tells him that she is a first-year student. She then tells him while she lets him go, that she is in the Rising Sun Middle School, and introduces herself as Sang Ji, where the word Ji means childish. Sang Yan, who looks at Duan Jia Xu, asks him if he wants to make a report that even still he is talking with her, and finally Duan Jia Xu notices the departure. So as he leaves, he happily pinches her cheeks and say to her that they will meet the next time, and asks if she now knows what next time is as he is mentioning. As they leave, she rubs her cheeks and no wonder as how come Duan Jiasu pinched her face, damn that face. But she suddenly starts to blush as she wonders about them meeting for the first time, and Duan Jiasu pinched her face and even called her little Sang Ji. About evening to where we see both these boys are leaving back for their school. Duan Jia Xu tells Sang Yan that his little sister has a parent teaching meeting in the school tomorrow, and she was asking him if he could help her by going to meet the teacher on behalf of others. Sang Yan says to him that no wonder Sang Ji was asking him to stay for dinner as he already knew she was up to something and up to no good. Moreover, he mentions that he is busy and he cannot go, and neither is there any need for Duan Jia Xu to go as if there will be an issue he will tell mother to go instead. Duan Jia Xu stops and tells in response, 
that even if he is busy, he will go with her as after all, lying to children is of no good. Damn, bro, are you a that guy, like for real? The next day arrives and Sang Zi is seen standing in the bus as she is prepared for the school. She wonders about Duan Jia Xu and thinks of him that he will show up for sure as he told her about it indirectly. Meanwhile, she also complains that if he don't show up to school, then he is a liar and hence a dog also, but quickly corrects herself that he is an old dog. However, as she was thinking and lost in her thoughts, the bus suddenly stops to which Sang Ji was about to fall as she leans forward. But thankfully, she was saved as someone from the passengers helps her. She looks back, and it is that same student to whom she was meant to meet with yesterday in that bookstore, Fu Zheng Chu. She thanks him, and Fu Zheng Chu, who pretends to be uninterested, says to Sang Zi about Zheng Ru Yi, telling him about her parents' teacher meeting, and Song Zi, without looking at him, complains to him that that girl tells him everything. Fu Zheng Chu tells her in response that she didn't come yesterday to the bookstore, where then he asked Zheng Ru Yi and there, she told him about this. Moreover, he says that there was nothing more than to tell Sang Zi about his teacher wanting his parents to come over too. She becomes surprised a little bit and asks why that would happen and he tells her that he was not paying attention in class and the teacher called his parents to come over, where Sang Ji had to come across same events and she tells the reason, that she was bored because the topic was too easy for her, so she didn't focus much on that. Fu Zheng Chu at first says that it was too easy for him too, and Sang Ji knows how he would play along, so she asks him that he was the student who had received the worst score of all in their last exam. In response to that, Fu Zheng Chu says that the answers were too easy for him to solve that he didn't bother writing them. Clap for this legend right here, guys. What a brilliant idol. So, after a few seconds of silence, he coughs and just randomly asks Sang Ji about her last rank from the last exam. She tells him that she was the first and in response, Fu Zheng Chu says that yes, that is it, but this time he will get first place in this exam. Fu Zheng Chu rolls her eyes and asks if he is willing to get the first rank. He takes out his tongue and asks why is that, and what could be wrong with this. He wonders that her conclusion is like he is not able to take such achievement because of his past results. But no, she tells him that there is nothing wrong with it. It's just that she wanted to remind him that it is impossible to get first place when she is here. Fu Zheng Chu, who now is wondering that he might start the next war, wonders that why even he is required to brag about it. She then comes to school, her classes start, and she is wondering about Duan Jia Xu that if he will come to school or not. In the recess in her art class, she wonders all day long about him, that she somehow couldn't explain the whole matter to him, neither did she give him her contact information. How come will he show up like that? Anyways, as of the time arrives where her school is about to end and the time is nearly 4.30, she is seen to be the only student sitting inside the class. She waits for him for about an hour, and with frustration she stands up yelling, Liar! She then packs her bag and leaves the classroom where she bangs into a person. The person seemed to be nicely asking the young lady to tell him if this class if of the first year students. And just as she looks up, it is Duan Jia Xu who stood up on his word. She began to drip tears and about to cry. Duan Jia Xu then starts patting on her head and asks her if her teacher is surely that much scary. And he comforts her, while he tells her that she shouldn't cry as he will take the scolding in her place. She asks him while she is controlling her cry that why did he come late? He asks her about the time he was supposed to come, and she tells him that her school ends at 4.30, to which he apologizes and says that he didn't know about the time. Then, she holds his shirt and tells him to come with her to the teacher's office. While they were going to the office, Sang Zi guides Duan Jia Xu that her teacher will complain to him later, and all he need to do is to agree with him to whatsoever he say and also to talk as little as possible so that the teacher don't get them exposed, because if that happens, obviously both of them will be sued and dead. Hearing this, 
Duan Jiaxu looks at her and say that it really is scary as she is putting all this in front of him, where Song Ji tells him to be braver. Duan Jiaxu laughs controllably and say that yes, he will be brave. Yeah, what the hell is braver? So, there then they have finally arrived in the teacher staff room. The bald teacher Chen looks at them, and, and as he mentions her name, she says that yes, and she brought her big brother. Duan Jia Shu introduces himself before he would be asked that he is Sang Yan as Sang Ji's older brother. The teacher walks up on him and introduces himself to him too. But as he stood, beside him is the teacher who mentions that it is the same girl whom he has been calling over multiple times. Teacher Chen then responds to her that, what makes it a big deal when she has her student beside her who has been called over and over? Fu Zhengchu is the student who then looks at Sang Ji, but he avoids eye contact from her. I don't know. Maybe that he is embarrassed to see that talented child seeing him in call with the teacher here. However, Teacher Chen tells Duan Jiaxu that he has some materials, so he will need them to wait while he gets back. He sits down and calls Sang Ji to come closer where he asks her that she is this young and she is already dotting. What an energetic student she is. She quickly resists to him and start opposing to what he has said to her. She says that he is the one himself who is dating others at a young age where he tells her that he thinks it is her. Although it is not bad, nor prohibited to date at such a young age, Duan Jiaxu asks her that she can tell him about it. But she stands there as in terms of getting disgust and tell Duan Jiaxu that he is old. The deep embarrassment which he feels is of no words with what this face can depict. He, in response, tells her that if is old, then why is she calling him brother? She should be calling him uncle instead. The knife stabbed to him as Song Zi in response accompanies her intrusive thoughts and tells him that she will call him uncle from now on. Yeah, the uncle feelings are too sharp, I can see that for sure. In the meantime, the door to the room is knocked and a nice young lady enters the room. She asks if they can tell Fu Zhengchu's teacher from Duan Jiaxu, and Fu's teacher calls her to herself. She tells her that she, if Fu Zhengchu's teacher and the young lady who just entered, is his sister. However, she couldn't resist and blushed while she looks at Duan Jiaxu as he looks handsome. Back to the theater time, Duan Jiaxu then tells Sang Ji that she can now call him uncle, but there is a twist that from then she would need to call her brother uncle too. She tells him that she would just call him brother. Duan Jiaxu compliments to her that she is very protective for her brother, and she tells him that she is not protecting him, Sang Yan is the one who has been bullying her all the time, and why should she be protective for him? She tells him that she don't want, and as he asks her why, she tells him that her brother looks older than him. Another great stab for Duan Jiaxu. Moreover, he asks about her teacher that when will he even come back, and behind them is that new girl who is now starting to blush while she meets with the teacher, not because of the teacher is too gorgeous to look, but rather this Duan Jia Shu is making her melting. Sang Zhu tells him that her teacher might be coming in soon, and here, Duan Jia Shu tells her that it is only because now he is getting bored. So he suggests Sang Ji to tell him some nice things, and that way he will be less bored. She straightforward opposes him and tells him that she don't want to. As he finds it cute or what, he stays like that and tells Sang Zi that he is asking her to compliment her brother and not to become a repeating machine and Sang Zi still says that she don't want to. Well, she receives the compliment of being a mean kid from him. Anyways, in her teacher arrives during this time and walks in before he apologizes them to keep them waiting. Moreover, Sang Zi takes glass and says that now she will bring water for them. As she was filling up the glass form the water dispenser, she overhears the conversation between the new young lady and Fu Zhengchu's teacher, who tells her about the past event she faced. She mentions that apart from his grades, he is a good child, but what he did yesterday, like how he ran up to the staff room and asked them to call his parents had given her heart attack. Sang Zi, who hears this, within her heart, compliments him if he has brain problems. 
Later, it's almost six in the evening when the teacher takes Duan Jia Xu a place to sit and really talk with him about Sanghai. Teacher Chen tells him that she is the type of child that really likes to give him headaches, giving him yesterday as an example, when Sang Ji asked him if she would ever teach the class, what would be left for him as an actual teacher to be present in the class. Well, she had a meaning, but come on. Teacher Chen frustrates to this matter and says that he has been teaching from a long time and such type of a different child is seen for the first time, and it is Sang Zi, Duan Huan Shu, who is role-playing Sang Zi's brother, looks at her and asks if this is the way it was happened to, which she embarrassingly lowers her head and says nothing. And as she mentioned that the teacher is like that, he actually doesn't stop there and continues. He mentions that after talking for so long, it's still the same thing and the same issue has been discussed with their mother as she came her the last time. He mentions that the reason he called him here is for Sang Zi's sake. Although she is a smart child, but if she studies hard and she will definitely be able to get into the top high school. He suggests to discipline her as they will get home. Duan Jia Xu hears it all and accompanies with him in response by telling him that he will talk with her as they get back home. Later, when they come out from the room, Sang Zi thanks him for helping her out and Duan Jia Xu asks her if now she will go back to her home. She tells him that yes, she will go home and what else would she be doing then? Duan Jia Xu then playfully tells her that he has promised her teacher about him discipline her. She becomes guilt somehow, and back up. She asks if he is going to nag at her too, and also that whenever her brother comes to see her teacher, he never discipline her afterwards. And to ensure this, Duan Jia Xu takes out the phone and says that he will call Sang Zi and confirm it. She gets more like her heart will come out. And as she mentions that if he will let her brother know it, then the whole world will know is actually something that she would get her heart out. She tries to resist him from calling from his cell phone where Duan Jia Xu says to her that if she won't let him, him do it, how would he know if she is lying to him or not? And he would be so sad if I had to travel so far just to get tricked by a kid. In the meantime, the young lady comes up to them while they both are busy in their quarrel and asks if she can get the number from Duan Jia Xu. She takes out her phone and begs to have his number. She even tells him that she will not bother him. But unfortunate, this guy is up for little kids, not young girls. He is in favor of two young girls and opposes her by saying that he doesn't own a phone. Remember, he is hiding his phone on his back. But... As Sang Ji is standing beside him, she sees him hiding his phone and lying to the young girl as he doesn't have one. She mentions to him out loud that why not if he can give the girl her home number instead. At first he looked at her and wonders if she is messing around a bit rough or what. But his facial expressions doesn't seem normal. And then when Sang Ji mentions that as he had described earlier, that he wanted to make his goal to get 30 girlfriends by the end of this month, and as of his 30th girlfriend, he can give it a try to this young lady right here while he has the rest 29 girlfriends. That young lady then slowly takes her phone back while she seem regretting this. Duan Jia Xu then pats on Sang Ji's head and tells her that there was no need to reveal the secret like this. And what if she scare the girl away? He also says that he wanted to spend the entire day with his sister. But since she has already liked the lady, the young lady there, he raises his hand and tells her that now he will give it a shot. But just then, the girl runs away from him. Duan Jia Xu then looks at Sang Zi and asks her about what they should do now. And he still holds less than 30 girlfriends, and he is only missing one before he complete this month's goal. So he wonders, what if Sang Zi can do him a favor and fill up this gap as he talks to her if she will keep him company? She was trying to run like that other lady too, but she got unlucky and Duan Jia Xu pulls her close. He asks, why is she running away? And she says that it is starting to get dark and if she don't go home soon, her mom will start worrying about her where Duan Jia Xu accompanies her and tells her that he will send her home. She resists by all her will, even pretend that the bust stand is near her school and she can go by herself.
and that it is not necessary for him to be bothered. She even tells him that if he will go along with her, he will be late from his college in the meantime. Here, she was meaning to somehow get rid of him, but he concludes that she is worrying about him. Also, as he mentions about it, that why didn't he notice how much she cared for him in the past? And in response, she says that she was just playing a prank, but she also ended up helping him. And as for now, she asks, why isn't he letting her go? He asks her if she really helped him, and how did he though? She tells him that he was contemplating for so long that anyone could see that he didn't want to give her the phone number, but it's just that he didn't know how to reject the request. And thus, she decided to help him and he didn't even thank her in return. He laughs playfully in response and tells her that what if he liked her and then what? Then Sang-ji is the one who would have been breaking two lovers apart. However, Sang-ji tells him that he is here to see her teacher and not to make girlfriends. Duan Jia Shu then says that he has nothing to say to that. But all he wonder at the moment is that who was the one who asked him to pretend to be someone's brother and come to meet their teacher as he questions this to Sang Ji. He hears nothing, and later he start putting up a lecture for her to be obedient, and she should try listening to the teacher's lecture during class. And most importantly, she shouldn't start dating people. As for her age, it is better for her to find some lifelong friends than it is for her to find a boyfriend. She anxiously tells him that she has already told him about it, but he interrupts her and says to her that if her teacher wants to see her parents again, then he would be found out for pretending to be her brother. And when that happens, it would be hard for him to explain what he did today, so for his own sake, she shouldn't get revenge on her teacher. But after hearing this, Song Ji reasonably becomes sad and asks if Duan Jia Shu can't just come every time her teacher wants to see her parents. When he doesn't reply to this and only give back a smile, she understands by this and says that now she understand what must be done. Next, he drops her off at home, and just when Sang Zi enters the house, she wonders while she leans beside the door if she will ever be able to see him again. So she tries to look out from her room's window and see him calling on his phone, but still, as he stands outside and about when he looks up, she tries to hide from him and duck in herself quickly. Now this is one thing that might be confusing. It's not clear who is it, but what I believe is that this is Sang Zi who writes in her diary, which quotes, It's as if something that tastes sour, but also has a hint of sweetness has slowly started to grow. The moment the girl felt it growing, she suddenly had her own secret that she couldn't tell anyone, as for that day when it seems it's the same day. And Sang Ju takes out strawberries from the fridge and sits on her couch while she watches television. Ah, you all know the childhood, eating your favorite snack watching television after coming back home from school and your favorite cartoon is on. Man, I miss the good old days. And how about you all? You all can open up in the comments, it's all for you already. Anyways, back to the girl. She enjoys her food, whereas her telephone beside her rings. She picks it up and it's her mother informing her about their late arrival back home. So instead, she tells Sang Zi to cook rice in the meantime. Sang Zi hangs up and puts it back, just by saying that she will do it, where actually she doesn't seem like anywhere near to be thinking to work. Just then, the main door opens up and Sang Yan enters in. On his first appearance inside the house, they both stare and gaze upon each other. Looks to which he seems to be the big tiger cat and Sang Ji to be a little kitty. And they both would just do the angry cat fight, which will definitely make the entire colony stand up with frustration and blah blah. Yeah, the cat stuff anyways. Sang Zi then tells Sang Yan that her mother called to tell Sang Yan to wash the dishes and cook rice as they will come home late. He, in response, says that mom doesn't even know that he was about to come home for the Dragon Boat Festival and how come she can ask him to cook the rice. She picks her strawberry and goes back on eating them, while she tells him to clear his doubts and call mom and ask her by himself. However, as just she would say that, Sang Yan snatches the bowl of strawberry from her and start eating them. 
Behind him is that frustrated little kitten who commands him to return it right away, where Sang Yan asks, how is it hers, as if she has bought them. She tells him that she took them out of the fridge and Sang Yan says then the strawberries are owned by the fridge. Sang Y An concludes her theory, as she mentions she took them from the fridge, that by her logic, he took them from her, and that means that they are his. His phone then start to ring, where Sang Ji retrieves the bowl and leaves. Sang Yan answers the call and says that he got back home, but also mentions to the person on the other side, as how many times he or she would have forgotten their keys. He also mentions about someone named as Qian Fei, whom also went home for the holidays, and so he suggests to ask Duan Jia Shu for confirmation, as he didn't go back home, but he might not be in school either. Sang Zhi, who overhears him, suddenly gets her bowl of strawberry on the floor as if she had slipped it from her hands. Sang Yan looks at her and asks her if she is being this emotional from watching a cartoon, some Chinese cartoon, which seemed to have a goat and a wolf, and Sang Yan asks her if Xu Yang Yang got captured by Hui Tai Lang again. And again, as he plays and bullies his little sister over, which she gets frustrated every time responds that she doesn't watch that show. Moreover, when she picks the strawberries from the floor, she start wondering about Duan Jia Shu, that why didn't he go home for the Dragon Boat Festival holiday and he might not be in school gives her the conclusion that he might be wandering around with his girlfriend. Damn, isn't she too young to fall in love with that older boy? And there Sang Yan hangs up the call and Sang Zi asks if he is the only one in his dorm who is without a girlfriend. He becomes envious and asks her about what she actually mean by that because he tells her that she should know how much he is popular back there. She says while she makes this rude face, as if she is being serious that Sang Yan should receive plastic surgery and it is a must for him then in such particular case. Sang Yan comes on to her and pinches her cheek, and as she becomes this much frustrated as it seems, she asks him if she has made him made, and if she didn't, then why would he call her ugly? To this, Sang Yan says nothing to her, and Sang Ji says that even if they both look alike, like he said, he as Sang Yan is the ugliest. Sang Yan then says that she don't know, but no one in his dormitory is taken, and that is because all of them want to date him. And it's only that he came home so he could avoid all of them where it's such a pity that he is straight. OMG, yeah, dorms have these things, guys, it's casual. But for Sang Ji, nothing matters more than this relief that Duan Jia Shu is not taken. Sang Ji's brother looks at him, paused from wrong his food, looks at her and asks her what evil things she is planning to help him move to his dorm. His dad smacks him on his head and tells him, that isn't it thoughtful if she is there to help him move his stuff to help him? Her brother replies that she is so small, what if she gets hit by something? Her dad tells him that he must watch out for her. The next day, Sang Zi calls her brother and asks him to pick her up from the gate. He is surprised she really came, and tells her that he can't pick her up right now and tells her the directions to his dorm. He adds that it is the ninth building and his room is 525. He immediately hangs up the phone. Sang Zi immediately notices her dad's car. She also notices a plushy fox and picks her up. She is convinced that the plushie is ugly and worthy of an ugly man like Sang Yan. She feels a presence behind her, and as soon as she turns back, it is Duan Jixu. Duan Zhuan asks where such a little thief came from, and she seems to be frozen in time. He bends over and asks why she is only stealing his things. He asks her if he eyes is set on Gege. Ahem. Ahem. Her heartbeat increases as she tells him that she didn't know it was his as her face turns bright red. She continues that she only came to help her brother move into the dorm while Duan Jiaxu is seen smiling. She further adds that if she knew the doll was his, she wouldn't help him take it up. Duan Jiaxu is surprised that she wouldn't help if she knew it was his, and asked if she has a conscience that Gege helped him her so much. She seems to be upset over the fact that he called a thief and he tells her that he was just joking. He asks her if she wants the doll or the fox as a compensation, 
and she snatches it from his hand. Sang Zi tells Duan Jiaxu that the doll is ugly, but Duan Jiaxu just scuffs her off and tells her that it looks fine. She asks him why he bought such an ugly doll, and he informs her that he didn't buy it, but doesn't really remember how he got it. Duan Jiaxu grabs bags from the car as Sang Zi tells him that if he got it from someone else, she doesn't want it then, and hands it over to him. Duan Jiaxu smiles and closes the car's trunk, and proceeds to head into the dormitory with all the bags padding on Sang Zi's head. Duan Jiaxu asks her if her bag is heavy and if he should let him carry it. She tells him that it isn't heavy and reminds him that she isn't three years old but 13. He asks her again as they have to climb up to the fifth floor, whereas she tells him that she will be fine with climbing to the fifth floor as she is not a little kid. While blushing, she asks him if he is planning to carry her up if she can't climb up. He looks at her and grins and tells her that if she want him to carry her up, he could do that too. Sang Ji blushes and tells him that he will carry her in his dreams. Duan Jiaxu smiles and tells her that he will dream about it. Boy, what? They enter the dorm room, and Sang Ji witlessness, her brother chilling on a chair with phone in his hand. He looks at her, and as Sang Ji approaches her brother and asks him why he said that he wouldn't come down to get her, and he tells her that nevertheless she did manage to come up on her own. Qian Dei is one of her brother's roommates. Wait, there are more roommates. Chen Jun Wen is another one of his roommates. He tells her brother that his sister is fucking adorable, and he tells her not to curse while throwing a can at him. He questions how he can lecture him when usually he is the one cursing, but realizes midway and turns Sang Zi to tell her to not learn from him. Qian Dei turns towards Duan Jiaxu and calls him Old Shu. He asks him if he has decided to get some hot pot tonight. He asks him if he is coming. Duan Jiaxu informs them that he will be busy tonight and that they should go without him. Qian Dei quickly sits up straight and asks him if he could have possibly gotten a girlfriend. He continues that he can't as their dormitory is a unit, and if he wants to get a girlfriend, then he should help him get one first. Chen Jun Wen corrects him that he should be the first one to get a girlfriend, not Qian Dei. Ken Dei defends his statement by telling him that he doesn't have a lot of requirements as long as she doesn't have a bad temper, but Chen Jun Wen just wants it to be a woman. Damn, these people are really desperate. Sang Zhu questions as she knew that all of them are perusing her brother and a silence enveloped in the room. Qian Dei looks at Sang Zhi and with a smirk, he tells him that he indeed looks pretty from the angle he is sitting from and he is annoyed. Duan Jiaxu seems to be leaving for somewhere and rubs Sang Zi's head and informs her that she can take the doll if she really wants and walks away. Qian Dei is still surprised why he hasn't thrown it and Chen Jun Wen replies that if he probably keeps it on the bed as a decoration. Sang Zi asks him if the doll is a gift from Duan Jiaxu's girlfriend, but he tells her that Duan Jiaxu really doesn't have time for a girlfriend. Qian Dei continues that he is a very busy dog, and it seems to be from a competition he won when he participated in the last semester, and her brother informs that they should go and get dinner now. Chen Junwen agrees to him and proceeds to take his shirt off, forgetting that Sang Zi is present, and he hits him with his shirt and yells at him to change in the washroom and he scratches his head, remembering that little sister is still there. Sang Zi then tries to fit the doll in her bag, but it doesn't fit, and she then takes the books out and puts the doll in. Sang Zi's brother tells her that he is going to eat hot pot, and if she wants to tag along because after that he will drop her home, but in return, she just tells her that she will go back home and eat. Sang Zi zips her bags and rushes behind her brother as he will drop her off to the station. What Sang Zi hasn't realized till now is that she didn't keep her notebook in her bag yet. Oops. Duan Jiaxu heads out of the shower, and Sang Zi's brother gives a phone call to him to talk. He tell him that his sister said she has had left. He left something with her and wants him to talk to her. He greets her and questions her what he left with her. She corrects her brother's statement and tells him that he didn't leave something with her, but it's quite the opposite. She left a homework notebook at his desk. 
He asks if he should ask her brother to drop it to her tomorrow, but she says that there is a weekly journal that she hasn't finished yet and asks if she would want him to write it for her and why she wouldn't ask her brother to do it for her. In a worried tone, he tells him as if he would help her write it and walks over to the balcony while asking her why he should help her write it. Sang Zi is silent for a moment and starts to tell him that she is scared of the teacher. They are very fierce as she is about to cry. Duan Jiaxu asks her why she is crying and tells her that why doesn't she wake up early in morning and complete the journal in school and he will bring it to her right now. She tells him that it won't work and Duan Jiaxu asks why not and she tells him that she can't get up that early. He is confused why she is so confident and bold about not being able to wake up whereas Sang Zi is still crying. Duan Jishu heads inside and pulls a chair and sits as he tells her that she should do the homework herself as her teacher assigned it to her and it is her business. Furthermore, he tells her that she can confess to the teacher that she hasn't completed it and bring it home with her. Also, she can apologize her. He adds that she can tell her teacher that she'll make it up later, but she can't ask others to help her write it. He tells her that he will wait for her at the station tomorrow at 6.30 and he will accompany her to write it. He asks her to stop crying and she should start to think what she will write in the journal, then wash her face and head to her bed early. Sang Zi stops crying and asks him to not tell her brother about it, and he acts like an idiot and asks her why she wouldn't dare to tell her brother after leaving her homework. However, he was joking and tells her that he won't and that she should remember to get up early tomorrow and hangs up. Duan Jiaxu opens her book and reads a story named A Stray Dog dated 2406 2009. Her story is pretty funny, so stick around. The weather wasn't very good as the sky was cloudy and it looks like it was going to rain. When she was back on her way back home, she passed by a thick clump of grass when she suddenly saw a black stray dog. When she saw the dog's face, her mood was as bad as her today's weather as it reminded her of her big brother. The dog looked looked just like her brother as if both of them were carved out of the same mould. She was right as it was her brother's son. Lamao Duan Jiatsu bursts out laughing. Seng Zi's alarm rings and she extends her hand to get her doll and over her ears with it but she sits up and looks at the doll. Duan Jiaxu's voice rings in her ears that he will wait for her at the station and that he will accompany her to finish the journal and rushes to the washroom to get dressed. She reaches the station and doesn't see a single soul in sight and calls him. There, our manhua finishes. If you like the video, make sure to hit that like button if you really enjoyed watching this video, and do subscribe with that notification bell turned on so that you don't miss on our updates. Your feedback will encourage us to do more, so make sure to let us know in the comments. Thanks. As it was the morning and Sangji was ready to go to school, where when she saw no one and called Duan Jia Shu, when she remembers him telling Sang Ji that he will await her arrival on the bus stop. She calls him and he asks if she has a wake, where Sang Ji mentions about herself standing at the bus stop and says that if he will get to her late, he may have a girlfriend that will look as beautiful as a flower, but her body will be like transformers. In the meantime, her head is bonked with a water bottle, and when she looks beside her, it is Duang Jia Shu standing. While he looks at Sang Zi, he asks if she even has any morals and mentions Ru Hua's name while complimenting her being a pretty girl. But as he compares her with Sang Zi, Sang Zi herself speaks up in shock that this comparison doesn't make any sense. Like the way she acts in response, she definitely is showing affection, but only acts against it. However, she again speaks up in response with frustration that he should not call her that. And in response to Ruhua's compliment, she says that Ruhua is nowhere near to being pretty. As you know, this little girl is also being naughty that being in such an age, she has become someone to acquire such feelings for even a guy this taller than her. But with his words, she says that he has teased her once again. Duanjia Shu, who then comes close to her and says that why is Sang Zi this short-tempered as a child? and he was only joking with her while he places the bottle near to her face. She grabs the bottle and for your kind information, this is goat milk, 
and Sangji is allergic to goat and beef products. The way she looks closely to the bottle makes Duanjia Xiu ask her if she will not drink it, and in response, she puts the bottle in her bag and without looking at him, tells him that she will definitely drink it. Duan Jia Xu says to tease her, that she will make him to rob it from her the way she is hiding it from him, and she says that it belongs to her as he has given it to her by now. Then, he points to the shop in the back and says to Sang Zhi that she should go over to the shop hurry and finish her homework. Bro, what about her school for which you are supposed to come here for? Anyway, they both then sit at a restaurant where Duan Jia Xu says that he will go and buy breakfast and when he gets up to pick from the items from the store. Sang Zi first looks at him and then looks at the cashier who is noticing her and smiling in response. And just then, when Duan Jia Xu asks from her to what she wants to eat, she quickly turns her head around and starts writing in her notebook. Don't know what he did back there, but he also comes sitting beside Sang Zi and start reading a book. Oh yes, he is eating a sandwich. Never mind. Sang Zi asks from him if he is still not on vacations, and in response he says that he is not. Sang Zi then wonders about his contact number, and the postal code is 123. This makes her wonder, and then proceeds to ask him about his residential place. He also tells her that he is not living in this city. After this, she comments on him returning home after exams, which leads to him going back home after two weeks until vacations. However, this is what you will be thinking about. And just by that, Duan Jia Xu responds to her that he will not go home and whatever is making her curious for him like that. He then points to her book and tells her to complete her homework before going to school. Sang Ji loses her thoughts and diverts from her homework to which Duan Jia Xu pats her head and say to let her regain her focus on her homework. At about 7.15 on the close, Sang Ji tells big brother Duan Jia Xu that she has completed her homework, and Duan Jia Xu tells her that now he will drop her at the front gate of her school. Later sometime, when Duan Jia Xu drops her by the front gate, and as she was about to leave, he asks her to stop for a moment, and hands her a small piece of paper folded in her hands. For your interaction, and to see how immense you are in this story. You should answer this small question as I will wait for ten seconds here. Comment down the answer. It was that day from when both her heart and breathing rate accelerated. And after that, for her it's like being able to taste the taste of sweets in the air, and the small emotion gradually turned into a big tree. Where this little girl began to embrace a small hope, she every time then hopes and wonders about when she will meet with Duan Jia Xu. She then puts the piece of paper in a bottle with some little crafted stars along with it, and wonders and hopes if she can grow up a little faster by herself and that each of her day can pass quickly. Somehow, the days came and summer vacation started. As by rewinding, Sang Zi mentioned after two weeks the vacations will start. And by now, it is after two weeks, where Sang Zi is sitting at her home. Behind her is her brother Sang Yan tells her about him going out for a bit and suggests Sang Zi to better stay at home and do her homework. As she is questioned about him not being allowed to leave the house, she responds by saying that what if she will get hungry and even that mom and dad will not be back soon? Sang Yan mocks her that when he was at her age and would come to meet such a situation, he would stay at home and cook food by himself. He picks her cheeks and say that now he has to cook, and even take care of her beside. While Sang Zi mentions that they both are not same in such case, Sang Yan asks why they are not the same. Playfully teasing him, Sang Zi mentions that she is the one having a brother and he is not. And this way, they both are not same, which leaves Song Yan speechless. However, Song Yan then turns around and says that he doesn't have any time to spend around in the house. And so either quickly he wants Sang Zi to tell him what she want to eat, so that he can buy otherwise, if she want to sit at home and die of hunger, she is most welcome. Sang Zi is seen typing something on her cell phone and puts the phone to her ears, and says that Dad... Big Brother is telling her to die. 
Sang Yan, who comes in a hurry and takes the phone from her to make her stop. But as he takes it and checks on her phone, there is seen nothing in the call log and Sang Ji was only pranking him. He becomes angry and says that she is such a monster and was playing with him in Ager. In response, Sang Ji says that she only rehearsed once, but now she will definitely call dad. Sang Yan throws her cell phone back to her and tells her to call now, but as she will now take her turn, he will take his turn with it. He seems to be holding a broom, to which Sang Zi says that he dare to hit her and see what mom and dad will beat him like when they will come home. Sang Yan says that it's fine, but as long as they will come home, he will have beaten Sang Zi and that will be fair. With some footsteps far, Sang Yan asks her as first referring to her as a little kid and wants her to come to him or if she is making him to walk up on her. Sang Yan starts getting closer to her, and Sang Ji quickly speaks up that it is her fault and apologizes that she won't do it again. Sang Yan reliefs himself, saying that it would be much better if she could say this a bit early, and if will not go against his will, and if she will listen to him genuinely, he will in return get her delicious food almost every day. There, he sits in the entrance, and while he wears his shoes, he tells Sang Yan that he will go out with his roommates and if there is anything she can call him. And also that she should not arbitrarily open the door to strangers while he is away. As he leaves, Sang Zi starts wondering about his roommates where Duan Jia X Yu is also one from them. She wonders that probably he, Sang Yan, is going out to meet with him. The piece of paper she had received from Duan Jia Shu is still a mystery for us all until now. And just now, when she goes back into He Room and try to take out the same thing in which she is keeping it very securely, that same paper, her phone starts ringing. She picks it up and it is her friend by the name Lily. Lily mentions on the phone call that Mikiel's birthday is coming next Tuesday and as he said that he wants to go to the karaoke together. She wants to ask from Sangji if she is up for joining them together. In response, Sang Zi says that she want to buy some gifts, so she is busy and won't be able to join them for now. Lily says that they are already on summer vacations, and what does Sang Zi actually means by saying that? She also adds that if Sang Zi will come empty-handed, she will definitely look very awkward, and adding up the sentence, Sang Zi says that now she will definitely not come as it is much reasonable. Lily, in awe, says that she can't be like that. And at the most, she said that gift she prepared was the two of them to buy together. And while Sang Zi stays silent, Lily says that it is her time to go to her extra class but hangs up while mentioning to Sang Zi that she will come along. Left alone is Sang Zi and her intrusive thoughts. She wonders that from the day she had received a note from Duan Jia Shu, they have not met with each other. Someone named on her phone by Jack, she wonders to send a message as happy ceremony, or the nearest ceremony. However, correcting her thoughts, she types the message of something like, you can see here, still her satisfaction level is not yet reached, so she decides to delete it as it also doesn't make any sense. However, she wonders if she can pretend to send the wrong message to someone, but as if it will seem like intentional, or if she can pretend to call by accident. When we saw Song Ji struggling to proceed on with communicating with someone named as Jack in her cell phone. She at first thinks to send a text message, but when she thinks of it as too obvious for a false claiming message, she wonders if she can pretend to think of someone and call him as it is an accident. However, having it of no use, she throws her cell phone and puts herself on the bed, lying on her face, and deeply contemplates to what she is even doing here. She says that she is always toyed with the gap between her and Duan Jia Shu. Turns out that the person she has the name saved as Jack is Duan Jia Shu. And right now, when she is on her bed, contemplating about having no common topics to even talk about, says that she is doing nothing rather than wasting her time and energy, which she would be spending on her sleep otherwise. She goes to sleep before complaining to Duan Jia Xu to who he think he is as her sleep is much better than him. The teddy which she then holds and lifts up is the one she got from Duan Jia Xu's hostel. 
and while she stares on its face, she wonders if maybe it is not. Like the way she is thinking about Duan Jia Shu, she says that he is good looking, and anyone who looks at him might just want to take a few more peeks. Basically, this stage is an overthinking stage, and unfortunately, Song Zi at such little age is having such thoughts for which the parents are there to keep an eye on their child. Anyways, she smirks and contemplates that these feelings are proving to be a shame. She then takes her cell phone and deletes the text message she was about to send, and while she wonders of her real life, that she can't meet with Duan Jia Shu, which she especially doesn't want to, oops, Sang Yan just called her, and yeah. Her phone also slipped. Anyways, she picks up the call and slams Sang Yan's eardrums with a loud hey. In response, Sang Yan asks if she has explosives in her breakfast, to which she is this loud, and when she asks from him the reason for calling, he tells her that he won't come home for dinner and asks what she wants for him to come along with. However, she becomes excited on something she hears from Sang Yan. Know what that is. Well, Sang Yan tells her that Duan Jia Shu is dong his tutoring job somewhere nearby, and he wants Sang Zi to call him and ask him to come and eat with the boys, and thus, Sang Zi says that she will come along. Now it's almost night when Sang Yan comes and picks up Sang Zi from home, and as she is now seated in the car, Qian Fei, who is sitting in front seat, says to go ahead a little as Duan Jia Shu told he is standing at the bus stop near the Eastern Plaza. Sometime later, Sang Zi says that she can look at him there, and the car stops in front of him. As Duan Jia Shu sits in the car, Sang Zi contemplates about the long time it has been since their last meetup, and later, when he sits inside. Chen Fei teases him by saying that he was tutoring high school students. Sang Zi then notices him and thinks of him being very tired. But just when Duan Jia Shu looks at her, her face is really put away. Therefore, Duan Jia Shu asks her that why is she not greeting him, and Sang Zi sitting there only refers to him as big brother, and just this. He asks if she has something else to say, and, and she says that she said it all. However, to extend the conversation now, Duan Jia Shu asks from Sang Zi that her big brother is looking handsome, and to no wonder she blushed when she looked at him. And Sang Zi, who is completely confused to hear this, wonders who the hell said that he is handsome. Qian Fei, however, looks back and says that Sang Zi is absolutely right since how shameless one can be, and even now, Sang Zi is not blushing. In addition, Sang Yan, who is driving the car, also says that Duan Jia Shu is always like that. Chen Fei mockingly tells a story that once, when he finished running a kilometer and was out of his breath, he came and looked at Duan Jia Shu and he received the same response of him asking, why is he blushing? Sang Yan in the other seat, says that Duan Jia Shu is not like this, with humans only, but he talks to dogs like that too. This makes Sang Zi to frustrate her mind and deeply become jealous that he even asked the dog why it saw him. <laughs> but then what? Not just jealousy. She then wonders that this way she is placed as a dog, if he treats her the same way as he is treating a dog. Qian Fei then says to Sang Ji that this man is of no use, and she shouldn't pay much attention to him anyway. In response, Duan Jia Xu asks why Qian Fei is trying to sow discord between the two of them, and Qian Fei turns to Sang Ji and asks if he did something like that. She says that he didn't and appreciates him being a good big brother. Duan Jia Xu hears this and turns to Sang Ji asking if she is meaning only him being the good one and not Duan Jia Xu. But he resists and leans back and playfully says that she is a little ungrateful child. Later sometime, when they arrive at their destination, Sang Yan drops them off and goes to park the car. As they walk in the hotel, Sang Ji just stands there and starts wondering about something. As she looks pale, it seems that she is having a stomach ache. Duan Jia Shu looks at her and tells her to keep up with them as if she will be kidnapped, and her big brother wouldn't even know about it. She, in response, asks that she want to go to the toilet. 
He goes to get her as her stomach ache becomes more severe. However, Duan Jia Xu turns to Qian Fei and tell him to reserve a seat for these two as he will go and take Sang Zi to the restroom, and Sang Zi says that she will be fine on her own. In response, Duan Jia Xu says that he won't let her go alone like that. What would happen if she somehow get lost, or what if something even happens? What will he be telling Song Yan about her? Inside a big mall in which they enter, Song Zhu, upon seeing the toilet, rushes toward it as soon as possible. Now, let's take a moment and see a flashback. For when Zhi Zhu as Song Zhu was at home, and her mother was telling her that she has almost came at the time of meeting her periods. She then tells the way how to use the pads on herself and put some in her backpack just in case it if arrives unexpectedly and comforts her that she shouldn't get scared of it since it is a psychological situation and no need to panic. And at present, this flashback was a kind of herself reminding of the scenario since she only brought her mobile phone with her and nothing else. However, luckily, she takes out bunch of tissue paper and folds them to be able to use these. And she says that she is in luck, that she wore dark colored dress, so everything should be fine until for now. She walks out, but the moment she does, she looks more like embarrassed. And when Duan Jia Shu approaches her to take her with him, she tells him to leave and she will come with Sang Yan. But she then told that Sang Yan has already arrived in the shop. She looks pale and wonders that now she has to go with him, and what an unintentional place for her menstruation to arrive at such moment. Sang Yan, who looks at her and deeply contemplates to what has happened to her. However, as he looks at her dress, he then realizes that it was something much more disturbing for her. He then responds to her that it seems that it wasn't diarrhea, and then tells her to go back into the washroom where he only mentions that he will go get it for her. You know what he meant to grab for her, and Sang Zi just, well, she starts crying. <coughs> Duan Jia Xu sits on his knees and tries to let her shh, as this is nothing for her to be this much embarrassed. However, she should go and wait for him in the restroom just for a little bit. She thanks him and leaves, where Duan Jia Xu then calls Sang Yan. He asks what is taking this long for them to come back, and Duan Jia Xu says that his sister is having that time of her month now. And in response, Sang Yan tells him that he is his brother, and if Snag Z is his little sister, therefore it is his too. Sang Yan, however, tells him about a supermarket on the second floor and tells him to go buy it. Duan Jia Xu, who says to Sang Yan to come down and do it for himself, since he doesn't even think appropriate to buy an underwear for himself either, is randomly hung up by Sang Yan, who pretends that the line is not great. He then looks at the phone and wonder that it is reasonable for Sang Zi to think he is really despicable. Surprisingly, Sang Yan also comes down and they both go into the shop and see the variety with which they are just overcomplicated by themselves and couldn't even decide what they should do. The helper of the shop, who is a female, walks up on them and asks if they require any assistance. And Sang Yan, who pulls Duan Jia Shu and refers to her, that this dude is actually a woman. While we proceed to end the video, I want you to answer this little interaction time question and tell me which old Duan's look does fit him the most. Comment down in the comment section and do make sure to hit that like button. Your feedback will genuinely make us to do better for the upcoming videos and subscribe the channel with that notification bell turned on so you can have our channel updates. Thanks.